and officially say hello. Well, hello. Um, so I'm horribly excited about um, photography. I know it sounds sad, and as a 51-year-old bloke, you think, come on, get a life. But, you know, for the time being, this is it. And uh, uh, vicariously, I am uh, I love the achievements of um, photographers and artists alike. It's something, if you don't love that, what you do in teaching. So still at, the, at my end of my career, uh, I've got a couple of years left, maybe, I don't know, maybe not, I don't know. But I'm still motivated about it, and particularly by uh, sort of innovation of it, the accessibility of it. Um, so uh, please bear with me if I over-enthuse. Equally, because I'm a passionate guy, um, my criticism tends to be um, quite... To turn your mics off, otherwise I'll be... Uh, um, so otherwise there'll be feedback and uh, it'll, it'll drive me nuts. Uh, I tend to be quite candid with feedback as well, which sometimes is quite tricky with creative subjects. But, you know, this is uh, 27 years of experience. And, and as you know, some of you may already be paid up members of this sort of creative or photographic fraternity that you can't just do it in lesson time. In fact, there's absolutely no way you'll, you'll become anything just doing as you're told in lesson time. Yes, uh, you'll keep the wolf from the door, so to speak, but it's something that you need to train yourself to do all the time. Now, in amongst in amongst the cohort, of which there's, there's a few, there will be people who have already started to do that, and they've started quite young, organising or composing the world, looking for nuance and looking for details, um, looking to exploit a particular circumstance, um, knowing that there's somehow a composition is right. It's like looking at a plate of food and you think yeah, you could give that a whisk with a fork and it's, it's, it's the same ingredients, but it's not appetizing. But if you've got the skill to compose it, to understand it uh, and to communicate that, uh, that feeling to others, it's a skill. So anybody who says that photography is easy, you know, d done well, done purposefully, it ain't. And, uh, you know, we're going to realise that. And I learn that every day. So uh, it's something that you just need to get into the habit of doing. It's about uh, you permanently having, as as the majority of you have, um, a, f uh, a camera on you that you're not looking straight uh, at the horizon. You know, you're not at eye level for everything. Photographers and creative people tend to look, they look differently from others. They look around, they look at the detail. They're, you'll be the sad one photographing a crashed can in the road while the others are, uh, you know, are busy buying uh, whatever it else fr from, from the shops. I mean, you go there, but you see new ones and you see you see uh, texture and you see tone and you see, you know, color or uh, the formal elements tend to be reorganized or rearranged and, ex and explored. Everybody will walk past the same space, but it takes a photographer to exploit it, to look at it. And what you're not hurting anybody doing it. And you'll be producing stuff which is tangible, which is which are things that you're proud of, which can be printed out and put on the wall. Whereas, you know, you can't do that with with other subjects. The other subjects are, are about a different type of learning. They're about absorbing information. You know, they are about it, it, often it's regurgitating that. But you're creative. You will be about reorganizing, exploiting. You'll be communicating and you'll be doing it with your own skill set. With you and only you will be creating that work. And it's my job just to help you organize it, to help you, to EBI will be constructive, to give you some feedback. And it's feedback that is key. So back to my point about feedback that as a cohort, we're going to learn from each other. And you've got to get on as a group if you're going to you know, produce a photographic shoot or a film work or whatever. You can, you can rarely do it on your own because, as you know, behind the camera, there's lights and there's in front of the camera, there's action. And there's about three or four people invariably that when you do some shoots at school or wherever, you need help. It's rare that you can do it on your own. But there are some photographers there, obviously, that are independent. And I'm encouraging you at the moment or certainly over over the summer just to get stuck in just to use yourself as a resource and don't worry about anybody else um, something that you just need to um, uh, get into the habit of so I'm going to share my screen now we will have um, uh, a chance at the end just to to discuss um, some details just to, for, for Q&A often there are things that I might not 
uh, negotiate here that uh, that we can uh, that we that we will revisit. And this is the beginning of uh, maybe some familiar slides. Um, hold on, just get. Uh, which you may or, or, or may not remember, but but uh, A-level photography, there are things that uh, I went through a while ago and still valid questions. These are things that you could still uh, learn from. Um, do you need to have studied uh, art? No. Uh, why study it? Well, um, you know, why do anything? It's something, it's a skill. So it would be something that you will uh, uh, allow yourself some creativity with, uh, whereas often you'll be told what to do and, and how to learn or what to learn. Really, you're taking ownership over uh, your, uh, your response to the world and you have to do it creatively. There are skills here that you, you need to learn and it's only learning by doing. There's no way you can just do it overnight. Um, it's something that uh, uh, you know, wishing to be better at something is just lazy. Do it. Get on with it and uh, learn from your, your mistakes invariably that with digital photography um, you'll pro hopefully produce hundreds of images of which two would be good because you're taking photographs all the time and it's those people that can take photographs um, will learn skill and they'll learn what works and what doesn't. Um, but there's a few points here um, that are still good, uh, good for well-being. And it might not feel like when I'm <laughs> giving you a rocket about not doing stuff, but it's my job. So um, I will celebrate um, with the utmost enthusiasm, creativity and people progressing. And obviously I will champion people that are not getting on with work that are, are treading water, that are not doing an agreed assignment or task just because it's my job. And it's not fair on the collective. More so, it's about you finding some unique expression with, with a very subtle and very, um, very difficult medium. So we've been through UCAS um, and uh, at the moment it's more relevant than... than uh, the most, I mean, how we communicate with the visual world at the moment in modern society. This, I, mem I remember doing this or, an, or a lesser version of this in uh, assembly, and uh, that was before lockdown. And now all we have to go on, uh, in a way, is secondary source images or, or people responding to or reacting to. And because I'm an old git and you, you are far more contemporary, uh, you obviously live and die by this sort of social media at the moment, um, of which can be exploitative and it can be used in sympathy. It can reassure, but also it can marginalise. And it's just being aware of the power of that image, or the power of image as communication um, is something that we'll learn a bit more about and you'll begin to uh, exploit. So vocationally attractive uh, with creative industries, I mean, uh, such as uh, one can be at the moment. Uh, and we've got 60% coursework. So your first year, in fact, all your work, you start, you, you may find features in your portfolio at the end. Obviously, over time, within your second or your senior year, you'll have more skills. So your work will be better. And gradually, it will be better than perhaps what you thought was best back in the day. But nonetheless, it is all live and uh, it is all accessible so everything you produce film work journal work darkroom stuff etc is something that can be um, presented to be assessed at the end of the course in your senior year and that's 60 percent of your mark sounds attractive that coursework uh trips well who knows and maybe venice i don't know and we often go to brighton um in the fifth week of um, the term, the autumn term, uh, but who knows? Um, uh, we'll see. What equipment I'll need, uh, we'll look at at the end. Um, things that I went through, and these are difficult things that you'll have to negotiate. I know it seems a bit silly, but I do get students that do that all the time um, because you have to be motivated to have generated work previous to lesson. Rarely will we sit and photograph each other, um, although there will be occasion where we use a uh, live model. You'll need to have done the prep work. You'll need to have done 
um, or looked at developing skills beyond the classroom. So if you're if if you think that you won't be upsetting sat there and not getting on with work think again and it'll be something that uh, again i'll remind you of one but then i'll do something about if it continues so so please um be be it's a part of motivation i do get that and uh, you know be, trying to stay motivated when biddle's barking at you is is difficult but remember I'm, you know i've been teaching 27 years and i was teaching here before you were born so it's you should hopefully begin to trust me i know you've got to earn that trust and uh, it doesn't happen overnight and i might not have taught to some of you but i'm in a i'm in i run a department that is high achieving and uh it is because we have discipline and somebody needs to kick bum after all and equally i'm more interested in the excitement from people that the students that produce exceptional work uh, off their own back it's that vicarious um existence that you have created an image that is that is uh timeless almost that is so skillful that people will look at it and go wow that should be in a magazine and it happens at this place all the time so the results are good because of, well, the results are exceptional because of students that understand they need to put the time in when can you start well this is what we do so the first thing is this summer assignment of which i've updated to a certain extent but it is on this powerpoint of which i'll put on the team's um uh, resources and I will attach to any canvas communication that we have although I don't think that's set up yet uh, please if you if you uh, if you miss this or you mislay some information it will be either on this recording or there'll be uh, again a digital copy on um, uh, the lists or the resources linked to to your group so this is your summer assignment of which I've got five uh, bullet points there um, and again as I mentioned it's about skills and it's about you taking opportunities um, of which sometimes they're few and far between at the moment um, but don't make excuses uh, there won't be any excuse or rarely an excuse for for non-submission it's something that you can um, generate um, uh, on the strength of this introduction and hopefully with these mini briefs of which they are. So each of these bullet points um, should persuade you into generating work uh, linked up with that with the title. So 16 close up abstracts means just that they are you crop out the world and it's about you exploring composition uh, again from a growth and decay perspective, but in an urban uh from an urban standpoint what does that mean urban what, what does it mean well it, it would mean different things to different people but obviously it will be an opposite to the 16 close-up abstracts uh which you generate from a, a rural perspective or or something which is to do with the natural world and it's that opposite um those tan that tandem of images that will begin to put together will begin to have some relationship um, but nonetheless it really is about composition and um, this can be done just with um uh, your iphone um because the uh, the actual optics on iphones uh, even from generations sort of five six onwards are still really good and particularly for close-up work they are often better than any dslr unless you've got a specific lens for that so use your your phone uh, perhaps to complete that exercise and take more than 16 and then if you can then choose the ones that you're going to display um, of which you think there's something about post capture that i'd like you to begin to negotiate but again, it's just a response to different environments. Next one, third bullet point there is sonography paper, which is a convenient title for cyanotype, which is just reacts to sunlight, of which is in modest supply at the moment. But try and get some. It will cost you a bit, you know, 10 quid, 8 quid, something like that. But you get a pack of paper, which is light sensitive, but to sunlight. And whereas we'll do some darkroom work with chemicals um, and with the enlargers, um, which is... Um, which has got nitrate 
uh, this is can be developed and then it can be fixed just with water but sonography cyanotype and again look for some examples on the internet and we'll get to that momentarily uh, just to generate your own ideas be inventive um don't just sort of because it, in, in essence it's about silhouette um it's quite easy to be convenient it's difficult it's harder to be innovative um but that's what i'm after uh, fourth one there is about a, a mini project and whatever you understand by that but i'd like you to generate a set of 24 images seven by fives are using one of those titles um quite straightforward you can be uh, it can be entirely up to you how you interpret that um fifth one there is further ideas so i've got four bullet points there but hopefully the majority of you will have done extra uh, and this you can, if you are a filmmaker or a cinematographer in the making, you can do moving image. There can be a video supplement um, and try not to be too banal and uh, or, or obvious, perhaps. Think about what journey or what um, emphasis you want your film to take. Uh, maybe some of you've got skills anyway because you've been you've been editing, editing together video for a while. But but use those as uh, perhaps a starting point. Or maybe you could just use growth and decay as a starting point for some image or video uh, or film or video. Maybe it could be stop frame. Maybe it could be about a, a relationship. You know, it, it can be anything. You can storyboard it. But again, anything you do, it'd be nice to do uh, with with purpose. Now, at the end, um, you know, towards the end of the summer, uh, you're going to, well, when we get back in September, you're going to present this work to your class, to your peers. Uh, and however you do that is entirely up to you. Um, you can buy a display folder and uh, produce uh, some sheets of A4 with your copy on it. It can be something that can be digital. It can be a, a PowerPoint or it can be a, a blog. Uh, it's entirely up to you. Uh, as long as we can access it in the classroom, uh, but you will, if you do it digitally, it's fine. Uh, you'll be talking through those um, uh, slides from the projector uh, to your group and it'd just be another way of, um, of communicating. Um, again, any combination of those techniques is, is entirely uh, viable, uh, but I still like them to be presented uh, in a way that they need to exist. And uh, it may be boards that you've uh, concertinaed together that's freestand. It could be hanging from the ceiling or it could be in a book. You know, I don't care how it is. In fact, sometimes the more creative, the better. But don't be seduced by the presentation of it. It's the quality of the images that uh, is most important. Um, and really, I'd quite like you to emphasize black and white or black and white being the predominant um, uh, skills that you begin to negotiate because with black and white photography you learn a little bit more about the nuts and bolts of 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 what we do there was this which was sent home some of you may may not recognize at all and again as heads of department we were asked to generate um, what students could do if they want to work towards an a level and then beyond the curriculum so uh, again this is just reinforces things that I've already begun to mention. Um, and really it is, again, initially try and think just in black and white because this then turns into texture and tone and repetition and pattern. Um, whereas colour is fine, but colour, again, seduces you in a different way. It does provide um, emphasis and atmosphere and a sentiment and what I'm after at the beginning are camera skills end of story good camera skills and good camera skills that are done again and again and again so good habits are recording the world around you look at the details the texture zoom in look up look down get your get your eye away from the habit of just eye level think about why that's there photograph it what, what, what this weed growing out of a, of a particular sort of um, urban crevice that's something i'm more interested in that sort of narrative there's something going on um not just a squirrel hanging off a tree from 20 yards away no i'm not interested i'm interested in the nuts and bolts of of, of photography and what we do 
you could do a lot worse than buy a practical photography magazine. I know it may seem sad and that you might you know, feel like you know, you're a middle aged man with nothing better to do. But but practical photography, black and white photography, just one of those magazines that you just have lying about has got lots and lots of um, interesting ideas in. And the more you can look and learn from that, you might think, OK, I'll use that. I'll just do that idea. But buy one or get your parents to buy you one or whatever get some inspiration and these things um, will allow if you're passive you you won't be generating ideas if you're proactive simply by buying a magazine or simply by looking and creating a um, a scrapbook of ideas you will be um, a teachable pupil who's who's in who's interested and who is not lazy and lazy pupils um, uh, irritate me because uh they they rely on uh, others uh, for their own creativity which is not what the course is about and be under no illusion about that some good books there too uh wallpaper magazine aesthetica aesthetica is brilliant um again they're a little bit more pricey those two aesthetica wallpaper magazines uh that wallpaper is not a magazine about wallpaper no it is just the title of it and there's some ex-pupils actually who work for that proper good money and again they study photography here and there's a book or two there that could be useful. And we're going to look at some famous photographers and, and understand their principles as well as we go along. It's a screenshot, again, which will be uh, on this resource for generally what your double pages are going to look like or the content of your double pages uh, in your photography journal. And uh, I won't be asking you to buy those yet, but... I will have a pop-up shop and um, I'll put examples on the internet, but really uh, you may know the currency we work in is an A3 landscape, a spiral bound black page journal. They cost £7.50 and we get, we get a bucket load here in and we've got about 10, 15 at the moment. Um, I'm not asking you to buy it just yet. But if you did want to buy it, um, I can I can communicate or ask me when the shop is open or pop up shop. It's normally open on Fridays and maybe next Friday. You could begin to um, organize your your journal or certainly the scheme of work. The light blue is what is, is often taught and it will be things that you'll be encouraged to produce on a mini brief type basis. Um, we'll go through them in class. You'll do them as homework. But really, when you present work in your journal, that's what these little squares are about. They're just dis they're just discrete um, tasks of which will will somehow explore or develop some of your skills in photography. You might want to start. You might want to buy a journal and perhaps start planning it you might want to um, obviously some of these things that we haven't tackled yet um, but there's no pressure on doing this and it can wait until september the purple squares there are after um or actually just before christmas you will get creative control over everything that you do and we then liaise on a one-to-one -one basis about the emphasis for your project work and what you want to do for growth and decay and so that just then will mature slowly over the spring term and then by the easter holidays um you'll have um finished your in, in essence your your first year uh but who knows who knows what's going to happen this is just a overview a perspective of the scheme of work this is the type of thing uh that we will do a lot of this like um these photograms and chemigrams need to be done in the dark room. So there's a lot of chemical work that we do. The pinholes, again, uh, are really interesting, um, again, by Daguerre and, uh, and Morel. And have a look at these people as well, if you, if you have a, a moment or you're interested. Some lead-in lines, uh, etc. cetera. Um, often we go to Brighton um, uh, four weeks into the autumn term. Hopefully that'll be the case, but, but who knows? Who knows? Um, at the moment, it's sort of work in progress. However, this is your first year. It really ends at Easter. And then you begin your senior year before the summer and that summer term, uh, because uh, it needs to be completed by, by Christmas. But this is an overview. So this is um, what we're moving towards. OK, so so this slide, again, you can access this anytime. Um, there are some nuts and bolts 
for um, photography that you need to, or I'm recommending you begin to explore texture, line, tone, pattern, rhythm, repeat, shadows, that sort of thing. And here are some of the, the big hitters from um, earlier photography. Uh, Bill Brandt is uh, on the left here, and then we go clockwise round. So you could do a lot worse than, than have a look at, at these photographers or recognize these names and begin uh, to sort of converse about this subject, knowing that um, you've got some some gen, some knowledge. Now, when I first started teaching photography, you know, a few years ago now, I didn't know who these people were. Uh, and it's something that um, you learn over over a period of time. Uh, you'll know who Ed Weston is if you do some research. And it's about that knowledge. And it's about recognizing that you are um, you're at the beginning of a journey that uh, others have uh, trod before and because black and white is such is so key to um, to continue to progress, it's something that I'd like you to start thinking in. Obviously, there are some brilliant female photographers as well, so uh, be under no illusion about that. Uh, again, Dorothea Lang, we start bottom left, Diane Arbus, uh, Francesca Woodman on the right, and there are others. So the emphasis will be on. Um, uh, multi-gender, multiculturalism, not just um, white, middle-aged male. We're going to get, I'll encourage you to get ideas from a variety of source material. Understand and respect that. And often female, female photographers have a different angle uh, than male. Uh, they tend to be, uh, in, in this case, more about relationships and about who we are. Um, which uh, as interesting, in fact, probably a little deeper than than the previous slide. And we'll use uh, female photographers often and we'll look to exploit and, and discuss those issues of gender because um, uh, because it's interesting and because, uh, again, it, it, to, to understand it is to uh, just to empathize with it is to exploit it in a way. So, as you know, there's there's. The photography, this is all CGS work, the photography at CGS is, tends to be uh, a little bit more avant-garde, it's a little bit more risk-taking, it's a little bit more um, experimental, um, uh, still with good skills, however, um, I, I can only encourage creativity and ideas, I can't, I can't necessarily teach them, and to, to know that these photographers um, are on this page, and, and as we tap through um ask for advice and when we do have dialogue about it but they they are proactive in what they want to do they they go out and look and they they'll pre present some information to me and we'll discuss how to do it and then we get on with it so um uh, it is creative it, um it is more uh there are there's lots of traditional processing uh, of which this is um, you know, a, a negatives uh, that you will um, generate with a wine through camera. All this is student work, but you know, uh, it, it can be about fashion, it can be about reportage, it can be about movement, dance, sport, it can be about uh, social uh, inequality, it can be about, uh, there are different nuances as I'm sure uh, you'll understand with photography, it's not, there's no one size the majority of photographs that you'll see will be about reportage, about recording event, but you'll be encouraged to be creative with it. You'll be encouraged to develop your own uh, resources. Um, some of it can be messy on the left, um, and we've done all sorts. Again, when you generate your own work, uh, the studios um, that I'm sitting in now uh, have been witness to all sorts of shenanigans, obviously with the health and safety tint, but but you've almost never lived until you've poured a couple of tins of soup on somebody and photographed it. And, and you know, if your idea is suggests that could link up with your motivations, that's what we do. Um, and one of my favorites, uh, of which I've got loads, but just because it's in front of me now, is um, Spider-Man at home. Um, and the whole series of these just, just caught Spider-Man off camera. But different type of photography. Um, and this is the um, this was the the final slide about uh, if you remember it was about you taking a small step 
but um, something which hopefully you'll grow to enjoy, uh, you'll get better at, um, you will um, continue to uh, generate your own skills. Mm, let's get out of here. Uh, but it comes from it comes from practice, and it comes from uh, you being enthusiastic uh, uh, and you looking for ideas. So ideas come can come from Pinterest, uh, as you know. So Pinterest, if you don't uh, start, uh, I would recommend that you start pinning. Uh, that the, the boards that I run are really predominantly for. Um, students to look at and refer to the, photog the photography ideas here are just simply brilliant some of them and uh, they are they can be exploited so get into the habit of having a look and maybe having a go there's so many good things good starting points here that could link up with with your project uh, both black and white and in strong sunlight you know sort of glassware or a simple fold of card with that with this abstract or mirror being lit from above or i mean it is endless and you think students that sit there and think i'm not inspired i haven't got any ideas people are doing the work for you you have a look at some of this enjoy it, but again produce your own versions of there's so many things that you can start with just on a simple board here that that uh, that i've running or i'm starting that you could do a lot worse um than start here for your for your summer assignment um i do have uh there's lots of things uh, you'll be encouraged to look at painting and look at sculpture as well so it's not just filmmakers uh, photographers and cinematographers um growth and decay again on the left there um uh, is more focused on the, obviously the current project um, there are other sort of folders here uh, based on previous uh, previous projects. However, um, I'm sure the majority of you will have started generating your own uh, boards anyway. Um, but if not, get into the habit of doing it. Have a look. Start at this. I will give you a link to it. At Pinterest, start your own boards. Grow some decay. Start accumulating work. You'll, you will then... Um, Look for ideas and disappear down a uh, a burrow of which um, you'll then exploit in your own work. Okay, I've been talking a lot. I do get that. Um, and again, if you do want to revisit any of these themes, um, this this has been recorded, such as it is. I know it's just me talking, but what can you do? Uh, normally, you're in here and we're we're doing some pinhole work or we do some um, cyanotype type stuff, uh, but you're not. So that's that. Uh, but but please be resourceful as you begin to negotiate that summer assignment. Um, now, we've got five minutes for questions. If you've got a question about um, this and that, um, please ask me now. And if you think later on, well, um, I, I wish I'd uh, asked Mr. Biddle that we could have gone through that. Um, and uh, I'm not off the edge of the map, obviously. I am contactable um, either via school or via email. Uh, you are obviously uh, a member of this Teams um, a resource of which I will post stuff on. So before you get in touch with me, if it's about a, a pro forma, or about uh, um, some sort of code of practice or, or any advice. I might have mentioned it in, not only in this, but I might have, uh, it might be on this PowerPoint and there may be other resources that you could look through. So if you do have a question, um, put your hand up now, but but if you don't, what I'd like you to do is uh, is cogitate over, over uh, what I've just presented. Um, really, if you if, if we boiled it down to to advice from from me, it would be about just get stuck in. Uh, it is about you taking photographs and taking lots of them and doing it as something uh, that becomes sort of routine. Uh, and it's only those people that um, will look at the world continually from a from a different perspective uh, that will get good at this subject and it is subtle and it is it is refined to be good is to do it a lot and to do it again 
So hopefully you will uh, start um, and start. Uh, hopefully you will have started already and exploit an atmosphere, exploit the sunshine, maybe early or early in the morning, late in the evening, exploit a context. Um, hopefully you'll be allowed to visit the shoreline um, soon. Obviously, take a camera, um, use your phone. One thing that we'll, we'll finish on is that um, I'm often asked about equipment and what to buy. Uh, obviously, you need a camera. The more creative control you've got over your camera, the, perhaps the more sophisticated your images are. Um, a DSLR, a digital a single lens reflex camera, is often a good uh, and affordable now uh, an entry point uh, camera because you can get different lenses and you can mess around with filters. But nothing that you can't do, I suppose, on your iPhone. One thing that would be of benefit is an old wind through camera. You will be taking your own um, celluloid negatives, uh, of which is Lowe's hanging up in in the studio at the moment. Hold on, I'll just show you. And by that I mean, I'll just show you. If you just see that, these strips of celluloid that you see hanging up in my room occasionally will be things that you will be taking pictures of, but you can only take these with an old school camera an old school wine through that maybe someone's got in a loft and if, as long as they've kept clean um it can be used so do a bit of digging if you can and see if you can get your hands on one if not it's not a problem but some of my seniors now i can just see eight films hanging up of uh, one of my senior students who's who's just been photographing at um a Highgate Cemetery or somewhere like that. They are properly good. And he's got the camera. He's taken the photographs. He's developed his own film. And he's now going to do his own enlargements. I mean, if that's not ownership, I don't know what is. And to be honest, he can be then creative with those negatives in the darkroom. So anything photographic uh, and anything, anything that can inspire your work, do it. And I'll look forward to seeing the results in September. OK, a lot of words, but I will let you go. It's very good to see you. There's lots of you there. Well done for uh, tuning in. Anything you missed, have a look at this, but um, hopefully get started. Um, if you think of a question, just email me. If you think, OK, I'd like this, that and the other, or um, I'd like some advice about, um, uh, about equipment, then just get in touch. OK, right. Ciao. Thanks very much. I'll see you whenever.